Yo, 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 what is going on, COD Familia? It is your boy BN, a.k.a. Mr. Kingdom Builder. And today I wanted to talk just quickly about some of the merge new updates and season that we're going to be seeing playing out for Kingdoms 1 through 10. So we have recently just found out and you can see from here with the new season details that was just announced, I think, at Reset, where you have the next divisions that are coming out for their KVK groupings from 1 through 10. Now, for anyone that's asking, it's going to be hard for me to kind of do a top stat series on this because there's not really a way to differentiate which players are from which kingdoms unless you've been in there before. I'll give you an example of this. If I go to the leaderboards, I cannot see who is from where, even if I click on the name. Now, I may know where these players, where some of these players started out from, but I'm not going to know just from looking at this face value going through the entire list on where the home kingdom is for each of these players that's why my view on this is what i'd love for them to do is is have separate leaderboards have a merged kingdom leaderboard but then also have the leaderboards for the home kingdoms so that way you can see which players are from which kingdoms and or even add something whether it's on the player profile or even here on the line where it says like dash or a little wall break or some brackets or parentheses that says the number of the home kingdom that's something i'd love to see uh, so that way it's just easier to dif differentiate because you have a migration system where you can have those players go to kingdoms but it's difficult if you can't see necessarily who the alliances are in those kingdoms, who the players are. It's almost as though the home kingdoms at this point are kind of like this fictional character that you can that you know exists, but you don't really kind of you know know if there's any truth to it, so to speak. And I, now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should have used a better analogy. But you see where I'm going with this is that you at, at this point in time you cannot go back to S1 through S10 and actually pull up their individual leaderboards or look at how their home kingdom looks. However, you do have this ability where players can migrate to those home kingdoms, but you don't... So it's very interesting, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a bit, but this is something that we're going to be trying to cover and see what maybe some of those matchups might look like, some of those allies, if there's going to be some unions going into some of the groups. So we'll definitely try to cover it as much as we can from that angle. And if there is an opportunity to do some type of top stat coverage, I'll obviously do my best to attempt, but I just, I just feel it's going to be kind of short coming given the difficulties of being able to find those actual accurate numbers and pieces of data just given the way that things are currently set up uh now let's talk about kind of the future seasons so in these seasons which is kind of almost one plus plus if you will for kingdoms one through ten they're getting a new batch of kingdoms that are going into their kvk group the interesting part here to note is that they're not actually going back to a home kingdom they're just going right into the next kvk group season or forced kvk group season merged kvk group season probably better yet mm -hmm. and so the challenge is is that with going into the season itself now like i was just mentioning what relevance is there to the home kingdom because that's important this is why, to me, it almost makes me think that being able to go back into your home kingdom, even if it's just for a week, you know, we're not saying it has to be incredibly long, you know, as though for like how Rock is as an example, but just being able to go back there just so you can recalibrate yourself. You can maybe just do a bit or a wee bit of farming. You can allow for the new players to act, to acclimate. You can get them set up on where they're going to go. Instead of kind of having to do everything in real time before a merge KVK season ends, and then you're going right back into it. That's just my opinion and my view. Again, we're not saying it has to be long, but even if it's a week or two, right? Something short that just allows for, for that type of uh kind of reassessment or rebuild up right that recalibration like we were saying would be ideal to me then we get to the kind of new potential right so this is something that i'm going to show off here right now that we just got wind of on what the potential new map could look like for one plus plus this was something i think that was shared by meow and i don't know whoever else but this is it was claimed that this was uh, pro uh, procured from uh, vip customer support and I think the first red flag that sticks out to me, and who knows if this is going to be done or not, right? But if we are assuming that this will be and we're going down this one path, the challenge for me is you have five kingdoms that are going into the merge KVK season, but you only have four regions that are open here. To me, why not open up five regions, right? Uh, that So that way each kingdom can have their own starting region, right? To me, that makes sense. Uh, and even if you did something like you had Kaltia... Uh, so Frostia, or if you did it where you had, you didn't put anyone in the corner 
and you did Sophrastia, Nivola, Darlin, Forgotten Land, Zoland. That's one way where you do those five so no one gets put in these corners. Or you do it the opposite way where you don't give anyone options for Forgotten Lands and Nivola because those are the two flex regions that have uh, adaptability for for two zone tubes they can go into. So what you do is you say no one's going to start there, and then you do Kaltia, Sophrastia, Darlin, Zolan, and Burning Lands, right? So I think those are two ways that they could have done it because you're going to have to get stuck pairing someone side by side anyways. And then we have to think about, well, if this is how the map looks, how is it going to go? Will zone will the others adjacent with zone ones open? Because remember, Darlin doesn't have any level two pass access. So the challenge is you're looking at this map, and even if they ha- even if they are forced to start in one of these zone one regions, will it play out normally? Are they going to move some of the level two passes so Darlin has access, and then they're just going to like blank these ones out, meaning that they're just going to go direct into zone two? Will the level one passes maybe open up later, or will just everything be the same, but you'll just be forced to start in these regions where you can't choose anywhere else? And maybe that could be more or less where it's really going. But I don't know. This is this is hard for me to swallow because again. Listen, I understand you want to have fighting and you want to have war. And yeah, if you think about it, them saying, hey, we're going to have four regions. Now, understandably so, you're probably going to have some kingdoms and alliances that will ally with each other. I'm sure they're probably already having conversations about this as we speak. But to me, just giving the opportunity for each kingdom to have their own zone on region to me is ideal. I'm not saying that it absolutely has to happen, but I'm just saying it's something that would be nice to have because you're putting five kingdoms into a merge kingdom season. All right, uh, now let's get back and over to our, right, like what's your approach now when you think about migration, right? So how do you view migration really? Because this kind of changes quite a bit. One, we, we got two p- points of interest here. One, we now know that there's more of a likelihood we're going to see five kingdoms in a KVK merged group. I think that's been pretty consistent, especially with me recently covering 23 to 26. That's five kingdoms. Now we're seeing this as well in one plus plus. So you're seeing consistency and trends here that are showing and telling us that we're probably going to be seeing groups of five for the foreseeable future. And maybe there'll be some outliers here and there, but that seems to be the direction it's going. Then the second part here you have to look at is how is migration going to now factor in because you're not necessarily going back to a home kingdom. Now, it doesn't mean that we may not eventually go back to a home kingdom. There still is that possibility, but for now, we're not. So you're pretty much going into a a merged KVK or a forced merged KVK season back to back because that's the trend or the precedent that's currently been set from from 1 plus plus with kingdoms 1 through 10. So if that's the case then really you're, you're trying to probably think about when it comes to migration and recruitment is trying to get, bring players and groups into your kingdom. But having, I mean, this to me almost seems like you have to do a lot more work because you don't know who all the active people are in your kingdom. Remember, when you go into the next merge server, players can join whoever they want. So it almost gets really confusing if you think about it. Like, let's say you have a bunch of people that wanted to go to server two that were in that one through six. A bunch of people go to server two, but no one, but maybe no one's keeping track of all the players that are there, how many total active players there are. So you have no idea where you need to go when it comes to having the actual numbers going into that future merge kingdom, because those players could technically still go and play wherever they want. So it is it is interesting. I'm not saying that, that that's always going to happen or that's a, a, an absolute, but when you're really thinking about it logically, players join a kingdom, they migrate to a kingdom, but they're put right back into another forced KVK. And they can still go join whoever they want to go play with. Now, ideally, you would assume they would go and play with alliances in that home kingdom. But the opportunity is still there, right? And obviously, you could still make the argument why someone going to migrate to a kingdom and spend the 5k gems to do all that if they're, just, if they're not planning to play with those alliances. But my point in saying all of this is that's kind of where I was going with the home kingdom direction. Is that, uh, and even, and I'll give you an, another approach. This is something I would actually love to see. If they did it to where all the players in a home kingdom had to start out in a in one region, meaning that you couldn't have players going wherever they wanted to. Not saying that it necessarily maybe has to be assigned, even though I wouldn't really be against that. Um, just because it lets you see who all who are all the players that are active in your kingdom currently, if they're all getting put into one region, and then when the level one passes open, then people can kind of go and join wherever they want. So you can still do the same thing, but it lets you just organize a little bit more. But I don't know. You guys have to let me know. Part of part of how I'm looking at it is it just feels very chaotic, right? With how that works. Because it's more of a hope, really, than is it's more of like, hey, they're kind of helping us out from a logistical standpoint. That's my thought on that one. I would love to know what you guys think. 
Uh, with that all being said, that's pretty much it for me. Again, this is, I think, a really big update and big news that we're hearing. There's a couple things that not only are precedents, but trends that we're seeing happening as well and that are being set. So we're going to have to see how the new season looks like here in a little bit less than a day and a half or how that new map is going to be. So that'll be exciting to see. And then how's SS1-3 and-4 and-5 and going to play out, right? A lot more questions that we have along with me trying to get you guys maybe some storylines for how some of these kingdoms or new OnePlus Plus merch <laughs> servers are going to be. Uh, and who knows, right, if we're going to see some new top dogs, some more drama probably, and hopefully just a lot of good fighting. All right, that's going to do it for me as always. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Until next time, I will catch you later.